Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 with our realistic series. And then you will slowly sell them off as... Well, once they've reached maximum age, you'll sell off all the ones that you bought and then all new pigs will be produced from your own herd. From, from, uh, is it a herd of pigs or flock of pigs? It's a herd of pigs. Herd of pigs, isn't it? Sure, it's a herd of pigs. Anyway, um, that's gonna bug me now, is it? Okay, so apparently, uh, a group of pigs is referred to as a herd in some cases, but normally, a group of pigs is called a parcel, a team, or a sounder. Uh, sometimes called a drove. I genuinely did not know that. That is completely new to me. A, a group of young pigs, but that that is, you know, a litter of pigs is just one group of um, newborn piglets from a sow. So that's just one group. Um, it's one birthing. So a, a litter is all related. Um, a, a drove, a passel, or a sounder. And that is completely new to me. I, I genuinely have never heard of that before. Is anyone else? Is, is this something that, that the rest of you have heard of? And um, although there is a, also a couple of official document um, references that I just seen as well, and they're generally referred to as a herd of pigs. So the, 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 the overall farm herd... Um, at least that's what it was in the official documents. But, uh, yeah, the, 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 these other terms. Has anyone else ever heard of these? Is this new to you as well, or is this just new to me? Uh, am I a bit late to the party with this one? Um, I'm actually really intrigued by that. I always like learning something new. That's really cool. Um, so, yeah, if you've, if you've got pigs on this in this game, then the way forward is... Uh, one tenth of your pigs each time and just keep doing that until you have uh, filled your pen up and then you sell off your pigs one tenth at a time. Once the pen is full, you then you can sell one tenth of the pigs each month. So it doesn't matter. I mean, I gave the working example of 10 pigs in a pen of 100 pigs. So obviously, if you've got a pen that only holds 60 pigs, you're doing six at a time. Every time you do six. If you've got a pen that takes, uh, say, 300 pigs, then you're doing 30 pigs each time. And you, you just work it out like that. So at the beginning of each month, you sell 10% of your animals. So if you've got a really big pen and you've got 1,000 pigs in your pen, then at the beginning of each month, you are selling 100 pigs. You do also have to provide the food in order to feed them, so it's not like it's just free money. But if you're playing on hard difficulty, you make you do make quite a bit of money out of selling all of those uh, pigs, and you make more out of selling them than you do out of uh, not selling them. If you just sell the grain as it is. Right, I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to grab this Arcusan Auto Stack. Beastie Boy, and we're going to run back up to the field, and we're going to do a bit of bale gathering. So I've got several lots of bales up there now. Uh, it's two fields full, and we've actually got uh, bales produced in this session. 50 bales. Right. We need to go and gather 50 bales from various locations on our property. And get them all back into the stack. And well, I'm already across the road there, so the car can stop for me. That's fine. Right. Go whizzing off into the field in here. I will unfold this thing, and I'm going to start gathering up the bales from the back end of the field first. You probably wouldn't hit the bale quite that hard with this machine, on account of the fact that that would almost definitely just pop all of the strings and you'd have a great big mountain of straw everywhere and you then need to go and get your baler man to come pick it up because it's a terrible mess and I left some bits behind here um, either your baler man would have to come and get it or you would have to shuffle 
just just grab up armloads and armloads of straw, carry it off to the side of the field, and dump it in the hedge. Both options of which I have done in the past. Not necessarily because they were my fault. If you've got badly baled bales and they're all like bananas, you go and touch them and they pop open for a pastime. Really irritating when that happens, by the way. Um, you don't tend to get badly baled bales anymore. That, that That's uh, more a thing of the past. The reason that they would be badly baled is because the old style of baler, if you had a narrow um, swath of straw, the straw would unless you were pretty good at what you did unless the man on the baler knew what he was doing and appropriately wiggled down the row in order to spread the straw out a bit um, you would end up with more straw on one side of the bale than you would on the other so then when you do them up and you know, tie the strings round and they're released out of the bale chamber they end up uh, being wider that well it, it ends up you've got a lot more pressure on one half the bale than you do the other the uh, you know one side of it's not got a lot of straw in it so naturally that sort of compresses a bit with strings around it and then you end up with a bale that is uh, sort of bending in the middle and it becomes banana shaped and a banana shaped bale is really irritating because it's very difficult to stack them up. It's difficult to move them round. And they're also extremely prone to bursting open. Especially if the tight side is too tight. If that's... Um, like, if it's really banana shaped, you've only got to touch it wrong with the forks when you're trying to pick the thing up with your load all. Um, and it, it basically just sort of folds round a little tiny bit too far. And then all of the straw bursts out the side. And even if the strings themselves don't break, it still causes some major problems. I am speaking from experience. Many, 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 many hours of frustrating experience. I've been there, I've done that, and I did not like it, essentially. Now, I'm curious if I go and have a look in here. Uh, there. First of all, in here right that doesn't have the shed in there doesn't have the shed in there I didn't really expect it to have the shed in there right oh I was going to say productivity is 100% yeah that's right it's the health that is on zero and the health goes up only when we put the protein feed in that's what we got to do um so if we go in here, manure and slurry, no, uh, further up. Right, I've got the bales of straw. That's not showing here. Eggs is not showing either. So what's being stored in that bale and pallet shed is not showing up on our list. Unless there's something down here somewhere that's showing up. See anything showing up? We've got a lot of mods in here. That if I was to get rid of some of these mods, we'd probably have a few other things that would show up. Right, if I get rid of the cookies, there's a lot of stuff with the cookies. Right, I don't see anything to do with the straw. So I know that I've got the straw in here. Right, this is in here, and it says there we've got 11 bales, square bales, 9,000 litre bales. There's 11 pallet of eggs, but it doesn't show up in our storage details anywhere. So it has 12 items in that shed, and that's also quite interesting. The fact that it says 12 items in there, so I'm guessing that we can put... Wait, what is that? Just ignore that one for a minute. 12 out of 250, so we can put 250 pallets in here, 250 bales, uh, just 250 items in there to fill up that shed. So it's quite interesting that you've got these various different options for things you can put in there. How close can we get before we destroy the roof of this barn? About there. Right, let's try that one and then unload. And as you can see, we're not quite close enough. We want to go back a little bit more. There we go, that's better. Right. 
So you have to get really tight to the front of that shed. That is one little aspect of that that I don't like. I would prefer it if the unloading area instead of being this far into the shed was actually out this way a bit more so that you can more easily access it i mean i guess it's kind of done like that so that you are putting stuff into the shed rather than running around uh, you know not just dumping stuff out the front but yeah i still think it would be better if it was done slightly differently anyway it's half past seven i'm tired let's get some sleep it's a brand new morning around this way and we have got 175 liters of eggs there we've got a full pallet right there which we could go and carry around and put in our shed until eggs pick up in value uh eggs there the best time of year to sell eggs is november actually thinking that we should keep them until november now and what about like we could I was about to say that we could keep the melons and the watermelons until January when they actually sell best. Uh, same with the red lettuces, is all in January. However, keeping perishable foods like that um, for an entire year, it doesn't actually seem like <laughs> a very good thing to be going and doing. Um, it's bad enough that I've already decided that I'm going to be doing that with the eggs, so I don't really think we need to be doing that with anything else. Um, the eggs, you know what? I want to be making use of this shed right here. So I am well aware that technically I can't just pick up and carry a 340 kilo pallet of eggs. However, I would state that I could carry the eggs a few at a time and pack them into a new pallet that is in the shed in here. And that would be quite acceptable. So that's what I've just done carried them in there and I put them on a new pallet in there so we're gonna have our eggs in there I like the way that the eggs are being placed at the front like the pallets being so the bales get loaded at the back of the shed and then the pallets are being put at the front so we're gonna keep doing that we're gonna keep putting the eggs in there as they come out and then we'll be able to sort of just see how it looks with the mixture of goods in the shed I might put some of the melons and stuff like that in there temporarily, just for a little while, and we'll see how that comes out as well. All right, now, when I was working on a big estate, you could, if you wanted to during the summer, you could basically, you could drive into the field anywhere you wanted, right? There would be no problem at all with just driving straight across the road there rather than going down and going through the actual entrance to the field. On the fields that were just kind of open like that. Not all of them were. Some of them, they had fences around. So, obviously, you'd have to go through the gate. Because you get it's kind of frowned upon to just drag your way right through the fence. Um, people tend to get a bit upset about that sort of thing. Um, however, the reason that I usually wouldn't is because it would very often be a bit of a bounce. If you're going straight across the side from the where the ploughing was done you'd very often have like a little bit of a ditch around the edge of the field on one side or the other and it would make for a bit of a rough ride so for that reason I very rarely actually just go straight across unless I knew for certain that there was no ditch of any kind and even then going across the lane the lane was very very rarely smooth you, you would always have a bit of a rough ride going across that one as well so yeah, pretty much always I would go round and go in the field through the proper entrance just because it would be a more comfortable ride for me. No other reason, really. Um, it wasn't because I didn't feel like I should be going through, right, just, just going into the side of the field. It was purely because I didn't want to be bouncing across it really hard and then walloping my head on the roof of the tractor. I'm doing a quick spin around the field just to make sure I haven't missed any bales because that's really irritating when that happens. Right, it's not like we missed anything here. We've got one bale over there to go and grab and then we can start moving into the next field. Um, and I'm thinking that, yes, I am going to get those... Uh, see, you go across there. That's perfectly smooth, but in real life, right where my wheels are now the rut in the middle of the lane would usually be quite big and then there'd be a little bit of a dip off the sides 
Um, it would be a bit of a bounce going in across there, so you wouldn't normally want to do it. Just because it would be a bit of a rough ride for you, and, and you don't really want to do that. Um, but yeah, I'm actually thinking with, with the, the pallet and bale shed that we've got up there, I'd actually quite like to get the pallets that we've got from the greenhouse and just go and store those in there as well, just to see what it's like. Because... I quite like the idea of putting all of this straw in there and then also getting the, the pallets from there. And we can see if modded pallets go in okay as well. Um, whether it is Euro pallets that go in there or whether it's other pallets as well. That would be an interesting test to do. I think it would... Like the overloaded pallets. Because you, you specifically got Euro pallets, which is the standard. And then you've also got the overloaded pallets, which are the ones with like the, the seed bags and stuff like that on them. So I guess we could buy one pallet of that from the shop because we're going to need to get more seed. Actually, now soon because we need to be looking at what we're going to be planting for next year. And I do want a field of wheat. We've got a little bit of barley here, but I kind of want some... Actually, I'm thinking that we're going to need some more barley. We need, we need to decide what crops it is that we want and what crops are... Um, I know that these two for two it is Slash, uh, chickpeas and lentils those two are cash crops we don't actually have anything that we're going to do with those they're just cash crops so we will sell those for cash so i may not necessarily grow very much of that we, we've done that now we've seen it we've seen it growing in the field look quite cool i liked it but we need to move on um beans sunflowers we definitely need and barley we definitely need. I can't remember about the rest. Oh, the beans. We sold the beans already because that was a cash crop. We didn't actually have anything to do with that one. So if there's like an oil thing that we could make with beans, something like that, then maybe we could do something with it. But other than that, soybeans, we don't really need to worry as another cash crop. I'm kind of thinking that we want to have one or two fields with cash crops each year. And then we want to have... The rest of them being, well, we want to make as many of the crops that we need as we can. And you, this one has now just shown that we cannot unload that one in one go in that field. It just doesn't, it, in the field, it, it, in that um, entranceway right there. You've got to do it a little bit to a time. Right, uh, brings that bar back up and then that bit folds up. We go off and we can go and get a bit more. Um, I can't remember if there is anything that we need wheat for. Because I want to build the basic things that this map has to offer. So I'm sort of looking at the, the basic uh, production facilities and machines that are built into this map. And we want to look at those. So there's a few things that I do want to get, such as uh, like doing grapes and the pistachios. Uh, well, I say grapes. There's there's an olive plantation that we can go and buy, but there's pistachios and almonds that we want to do, and they require some rather specialist equipment. So we do want to be heading towards doing that. So basically, I need to be able to make some money in order to get to it. So I want to do whatever I need to do with my crops to cover the needs of everything that I've got here. Like all of those basic machines that we can go and get. And then after that, I want whatever's going to make me some cash. That's what we're looking at. I know that the silage, that's going to make us a decent bit of cash this winter. That, that's one good thing that we're going to get. Um, we'll be selling that through the winter once we've made that silage. And then we've also got the sugar beet. Now, we'll be getting some cut sugar beet that will be... Uh, well, we, we... Oh, yeah, that's a thing. That's actually a thing. Uh, all of those base game mods that are built into this or these right here we got the cut mass that we got to feed these things into the top we can't just tip the sugar beet out in massive trailers it's got to be fed into the top that really irritates me it makes me not want to actually use this one i'm curious what the rate of uh chop is like how how many bits of cut you get out for one sugar beet going in 
Um, it'll be interesting to see what that ratio is. And then the, the other ones here, like you got that for the protein. So this is the one that we really need. We have to have the barley, the cut sugar beet, and then we get in the other, and that makes the protein feed. That's a really important one. And then we want the sunflowers and corn. So sunflowers and corn is actually two crops that we want to grow this year. We've already got some potatoes. So we're going to need those two crops to grow this year. And that's both spring crops. So we don't need to worry about those this winter. And then the rest of this stuff, is, well, there's a bit of barley in there for the seed master, but that, that's fine. We don't have to worry about that one. Um, pistachios, milk. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Okay. So I don't actually worry. I'm not going to worry too much about the rest of the crops. We kind of just make it as we go along. All the sugar beet that we've got, I think that we're going to want to be making some sugar. Does it, you know, it, it seems like a sensible thing to go and do. So if we were to make sugar and start producing that here on the map, uh, we could either sell that or then start uh, processing that into something different as well. I'm kind of thinking that if we were to buy a sugar factory, we could just then uh, sell the sugar afterwards just just have it turn into sugar and then sell it afterwards so we, we'll need some cut sugar beet where well, we can cut the whole lot so i want to get the, the chopping thing but there's actually another thing that i want to get and that is now i got beet technology here but i don't think it's going to be in that no it's not in that section uh we've got auger wagons now there is an auger wagon that we can use see this thing here it's 211 cubic meters that's 211,000 liters of grain that you can put into that one uh that one's the base that's potatoes we that's the one that we used this one here is for sugar beet and so is this one and i think these are absolutely brilliant look at that thing i love the look of that 50,000 liters that's 45,000 liters so i want to play around with those and then uh, we move into mods now obviously the mods they can they're changed to take anything and i'm not too fussed about having those that will take anything um i don't need one of these that will take sugar beet and potatoes and stuff i didn't really want to do that but what there is there was there's a mod pack for sugar beet cutters this is one of them this is another. This is one that goes on the back of a lorry. And uh, then we've got two more over here. So this one here is 77,000. And then you've got the great big, the walkabout mother bins. Now, a mother bin works differently. You take it out of the field, you park it there, and you leave it. You don't move it. So we could have 211,000 litres of sugar beet tipped into this one with it parked out in the field. And it... Uh, when it comes out of the spout, it actually is cut sugar beet. So the machine works to cut it while it's there in the field. And I think that's absolutely brilliant. I really love that. This one here works basically the same way, except that um, it's the standard sugar beet offloader bin. But you, you can clearly see there's no way that that would be able to cut it up. So while I like the idea of that, I don't really want to be using one of those to do this particular job. I also don't want to use that because i'm just not going to be able to move that around on his map i would love the challenge of trying to move this thing around on the map but seriously are we even going to get that out of the shop it's just not going to happen is it like i mean i'll tell you what i think we could do it 400 horsepower i think we could you know potentially we might be able to and the sugar beet field that we've got one of them is directly opposite the shop so in theory, we should be able to get this one and get it out. Which is the cost of these? 8,600. Get into the comments section. Tell me if you want me to use this one on the map. I'm kind of thinking no. 
Uh, there is a smaller version of it, but I don't really want to do that one either. If, if I'm going to do that, it'll be this one. And yes, I realise that is utterly ridiculous and it's not realistic in the slightest. None of these are particularly realistic for cutting sugar beet, to be honest, but it's still, it is something that I'm going to do. And I'm actually thinking that I'll probably go with this one that is on the... Uh, it goes on to the lorry. I don't know how this one empties out, though. Like, all of those bins. I think it goes down to a conveyor belt underneath. That conveyor belt brings it out back over here. But what this thing is on the back, I'm not really sure. Um, It just says sugar beet cutter. So I guess that this one does empty out at the back and doesn't dump out from the bin, each individual bin. Is that's, that's my guess with how this thing works. But I'm not sure looking at that oh yeah it does look see sorry I, I i i didn't see that that's got a great big unloading conveyor right there so yeah that's how it work goes down to a conveyor we can assume that there's sets of knives in there and it shreds the sugar beet and then tips it out the back so that one could work and that will go on our lorry so that would you know free up all the tractors and and that would be quite cool because then we can have the tractors uh working in the field doing cultivating planting that kind of thing while we're doing the harvest and that would work quite well but if we're gonna have a tractor one it'd probably be one of these um i might consider that one if i can i'll go and do the silage harvest first and then we'll do the sugar beet harvest after that so that gets you some time to reply would you like me to try and use the walkabout mother bin 6000 sugar beet cutter that one right there we tip all of the sugar beet into that one so each time the harvester is full we drive it over to this one and we tip it out into there and then this stays stationary in the field could be interesting on the other hand i am very well aware that it is nothing like realistic in any way shape or form and i know that some of you watch this series specifically because i tried to play this one a tad bit more realistic than I do my other series, so maybe the walkabout bin is really not what we want turning up in central Spain. Um, it, it's it's not really suited to this particular region, but it may be something that some of you find comical and would like to also see. So I'm going to allow you to comment in the comment section down below about whether or not you want to see it or not. Right, we're going to go here, we're going to unhitch that one unhitch a uh, tip that one and tip that one as well and then we can drop this back down go and get the last of these bales and then as soon as i've done that we will um well this one needs to be returned to the shop i'll probably get the shop to actually come up here and get it rather than us going anywhere specifically and well, we actually, yeah, we need to start looking at what we're going to do for next year, what crops we're going to do. Um, and also sugar. Where do I sell the sugar on here? Or sugar beet? That goes to the sugar company. South Biogas Plant or the sugar company. So I need to find the sugar company. Where is the sugar company? Not that one. I'll go to that one. It's right there. Okay. We'll visit sugar company in a minute this is the sugar company right unfortunately folks that is all we have got time for today a massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the great book of names to find out some more details about all the names coming past please head into the description and click on the link to the discord it's a link to another video the link is on the other video uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.